Hello, my name is Chris Hammond, the Director of Training here at the .NET Nuke Corporation. In this video, I'm going to give you an overview of .NET Nuke security roles. We'll talk about what roles are within .NET Nuke, and then we'll talk about how we can access the various roles, talk about the default roles that come with .NET Nuke out of the box, and then how you can utilize roles and create additional roles. So what are roles within .NET Nuke? Essentially, roles are just groupings of users. They're very similar to Active Directory groups. And if you plug in an Active Directory provider for .NET Nuke, you can actually sync roles with groups and then have users that are synchronized across that membership as well. Now, what you're going to be using roles for is the ability to define permissions and access levels to various aspects of your website. Through the use of security roles, you can control who can access a page, who can edit a page, or who can add to a page. So there are a number of different things from a security perspective you're going to be able to utilize. Now, for .NET New Community Edition versus .NET New Professional Edition, Community Edition has a much more limited permissions model versus Professional, in which you can actually define a more granular permissions model. We'll see that in a future video. Now, when we're talking about users and roles, it's important to understand that a user can belong to one or many roles within .NET Nuke. Well, there are a couple of roles out of the box that a user is going to belong to just with a basic settings within .NET Nuke. So let's take a look at those settings. So if we switch over here, we have a fresh .NET Nuke 5.6.0 Professional Edition installation. Now, everything we review here in this video is going to be applicable to both Professional Edition and to Community Edition. Now I'm already logged in as an administrator, which gives me access to manage roles within this particular .NET Nuke website. So to manage roles, I'm going to go up into the admin control panel, and I'm going to click on the roles icon. This will take me to the security roles page. This page can also be found underneath the admin menu. Now here on the security roles page, we're going to find a list of the default roles that come with pretty much every version of .NET Nuke. You see we have a role called administrators. It's pretty self-explanatory. It's the grouping of users who are portal administrators for this particular website in our installation of .NET Nuke. The second role we'll find here is called registered users. Anyone who creates an, a user account on our website is automatically put into the registered users role. That's what this checkbox is over on the far right under auto. Now the registered users role is not marked as public. The next role, subscribers, is both automatic and public. And what that means is anyone who creates an account on the website will automatically be put into the subscribers role. But because it's marked as public, they can actually remove themselves from that role by going to their profile, clicking on edit profile, and then clicking on the manage services link. Now that's a feature that can be turned on or off within .NET Nuke. But essentially any public role is a role that a user could put themselves into or remove themselves from. Now the fourth role we find here was added in .NET Nuke 5.5 with the addition of multilingual content. We have a translator role here for the English US language. Now it's possible to add additional languages into .NET Nuke and as you do so using that multilingual content we'll get additional translator roles based on the various languages. Now what you can do is you can use these roles to assign the permissions for various pages and modules. So out of the box you can see we have our four roles that are defined here. We can also come into .NET Nuke here and create additional roles. So if we want to add a new role to our website, we can use the Actions menu for the Security Roles module and click on Add New Role. This will take us to a page that's going to allow us to come in and create a new, an additional role. So I'm just going to create a role with a name called test role and we do have to provide a brief description. Now when you create a role you cannot come back and change the name after creation. So if you need to change a name you would have to create a new role with the changed name and then remove the previously created role. You would also then have to assign the users from the first role into this newly created role. Now, we're not going to go ahead and touch on role groups in this particular video, but we'll take a look at the public role setting in the auto assignment. So if we want this role to be something that a user can add themselves to, 
we would mark it as public. If we want this role to be a role that every user who gets an account created is automatically assigned to, then we would mark it as auto assignment. Now, oftentimes, as you're going through and you're going to be adding security into your .NET Nuke websites, you're not going to be choosing public and auto assignment role options. Now, for now, we can simply go ahead and click on Update to create our role, and we'll find that role shows up in our list of security roles on the page. From here, we can edit the role, which will allow us to change the description to change any grouping options. We can also click on the little people icon here, which allows us to manage users. If we click on that, that'll take us to a page that lists off any users that currently belong to this role. Well, since it's a new role that was created, we don't have any users that are listed here down below, but we can choose to add a user existing from our website into this particular role. We have a list of user accounts here can see we, this website currently has two, admin and test user. We can choose one of those users, and we can go ahead and assign that user to the role. Now, when we assign them to the role, we can set a start date and an end date for that assignment. So if you want to give someone access to a certain role for a fixed amount of time, you can assign those, those dates. Now, we can also choose to send an email to the user to tell them that they've been added to the role. Typically, you'll uncheck this when you go to add a user to a role. You would then communicate that information to the user in some other manner. Otherwise, .NET Nuke will just simply send them a notification that tells them they've been added to a new role on the website without any further explanation of what that role provides them access to. At this point, we can click Add User to Role, and what you'll find is the user now shows up in the list at the bottom of the page. Now, from here, we could go ahead and assign a start date or an end date if we didn't do that the first time. And by choosing the user and then clicking add user to role it'll simply update their membership in that particular role now once we have a user in a role we can then start to use that role from a permissions perspective now we'll see permissions within future videos here in the dotnet nuke videos that we're recording for more information about dotnet nuke i'd encourage you to check out our dotnet nuke training page you can find it under the resources tab on dotnet nuke.com or you can access it by going to the shortcut URL here. Now remember that shortcut URL is case sensitive. We provide a variety of free training videos out there. We also have a, a number of instructor-led training webinars and custom on-site and online training options available. Again, this was Chris Hammond with .NET New Corporation. Thank you for watching the video.